What's up everyone, it's Brad with the HODL Fandom, and today I'm going to discuss our Immortal Hulk issue number one NFT on the VV app. This has been ranked by Screen Rant and the Comic Book Herald as the number one, as in the best Hulk story of all time. And that says a lot. So what does this mean for the value of our NFT, and what is this story all about? As usual, I'll give you the crash course on all of that. Let's get into it. When Ikomi or Vivi released this Immortal Hulk issue number one NFT, I was about halfway done reading the series and planning on finishing it up at some other time. Up to that halfway point, I was like, okay, this is good, it's dark, it's interesting, it's different. Well, the past few days, I've pushed to finish the entire series sooner just to give you guys a full story, and it's definitely up there in the top three, somewhere in the top three, in my opinion. It's really good. And it's also kind of different, so also hard to compare at times. See, this series by Al Ewing is a much darker, complex, and kind of a psychological thriller series, and sets up so many things in the future for the Hulk or anyone with gamma-infused powers. It's different than other great stories like, say, World War Hulk, where it's about the Hulk smashing everything and destroying everyone, which is another great series, but in my opinion, it's just different. It's also one of the longer series in recent memory, with 50 issues. And it's really new. In fact, it's so new that issue number 50 was just released last week. And the online versions of issue 49 and 50 are not available online from Marvel. So I walked over to my local comic book store and picked up those last few issues. It also can be complicated without some background information. So let me quickly fill in some of the key points for you. This story delves into the history of the Hulk and his many personalities. We often see the reference of Joe Fixit, aka the Grey Hulk. When the Hulk was first introduced in 1962 in the Incredible Hulk issue number one by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, he was actually grey, not the green one that most are familiar with. In reality, this was due to a printing issue, but this was written into the story later that the grey version was a personality within Bruce Banner, and they would later call this Joe Fixit. The Hulk stories revolving around Joe Fixit were a bit crazy. He was a gangster in Las Vegas and he would shoot Tommy guns. When they turned the Hulk green, they just called that version the Savage Hulk, but most just refer to him as the Incredible Hulk. Grey Hulk would also turn into the Hulk at night, and this mechanic is brought back in this series. Other versions or personalities of the Hulk show up in this series, such as the Devil Hulk and Worldbreaker Hulk. I also need to set this up in terms of when in the comic universe this takes place. This is after the Second Civil War, where the Hulk was actually killed by Hawkeye, per Bruce Banner's instructions, and the mantle was taken over by Amadeus Cho for a few years. The Hulk was eventually brought back, and this is his first feature series since then. So let's jump to our NFT, and for those who haven't read it, let's quickly go over this. This series and this issue starts with a quote, there are two people in every mirror. This is an important and recurring theme beyond issue number one. We see a young man approach a Roxxon gas station with the intent of robbing it. Roxxon is a notoriously corrupt company in Marvel Comics. As this young man tries to get the cashier to open the register, a girl drops a bottle of pop on the ground and the robber kind of freaks out and shoots her. Bruce is about to hulk out, but he gets shot in the head before he can turn into the Hulk. Bruce Banner is killed. The robber proceeds to kill the cashier and runs off with some cash. We see a reporter named Jackie McGee who will be following this series throughout and will have a role to play. We proceed to the morgue and we see a hand turning green. This is Al Ewing first establishing that the Hulk cannot die even if Bruce Banner is killed. The how and why this is the case will be explored later in the series. We see that the young Robert was actually robbing the gas station due to a debt owed to a gang called the Dogs of Hell. This kid has really dug himself into a deep hole as he's indebted to the Spiker Gang but is now a murderer. As the leader of this gang is saying, there's always someone stronger than you, there's a massive thud and we know as readers that that's the Hulk. There's a lot of foreshadowing in this series as one gang member is freaking out saying, it's the devil. The Hulk takes out the entire bike gang and of course, like in all horror movies, the kid drops his car keys when he's trying to escape. The Hulk finds him and confronts him about the murder. He doesn't care about the kid's excuses and basically serves him his own justice by breaking every single bone in his body with the likelihood of him never walking again. Again. This issue ends with Bruce in a hotel room wondering if he's a bad person, with the Hulk grinning, smiling back at him. There are two people in every mirror. So that's our NFT, and it's really just the beginning. Overall, this is a fairly big series with 50 issues, so I'll do my best to summarize only the key points in a few minutes to explain where this sets up Banner and the Hulk for the future. With that said, it's almost impossible to do so without losing some of the storytelling, the build-up, and the easter eggs that good writing gives you. 
If you're really interested, definitely check it out at your local comic book store, or maybe VV will release the remaining 49 issues, and they'll still probably sell out in a fraction of a second. As we continue the story, after numerous Gamma-related incidents in a small town, it's discovered that there is a realm below, a place where the mirror of the One Above All exists. The One Above All in Marvel Comics was first introduced in Fantastic Four issue number 511 as the supreme ruler of the multiverse, and the source of all things good. The One Above All is the most powerful being so far in Marvel Comics. Here we finally get its opposite, and is referred to as the One Below All. This being is lower than the devil, and resides in a place lower than hell. The place where the One Below All exists, let's call that the Below Place, is Gamma Infused, and all Gamma Irradiated beings share a link to this realm, as Gamma Radiation has some mystical properties that originate from this Below Place. When any Gamma Infused being dies, they go to this Below Place, and then there is a door where they can return to the real world, thus making the Hulk and other Hulks immortal. The One Below All has the ability to possess bodies of beings, and that's how it manifests itself in the real world. In addition to all this, the Hulk is also dealing with the Avengers, who are trying to contain him. The general consensus when the Hulk appears is not that they're enemies, he is a founding member of the Avengers after all. They just need to stop him and contain him because he's uncontrollable. Also, a less friendly General 14, a protege of Admiral Thunderbolt Ross, tries to consistently capture the Hulk for purposes of making weapons with his gamma-infused body. He tries tries to send Bushwhacker and an Abomination to subdue the Hulk, but are ultimately defeated with the Hulk taking over his base of operations. At one point, General 14's forces have the Hulk chopped up into a bunch of different pieces. In a pretty gruesome scene, he grows back together while absorbing the scientists tasked with experimenting on him. Now I just have to mention this part because I thought it was pretty cool. There is a conflict with Roxxon and a character named Zemu afterwards. I'm not going to go into detail about this because it just seemed like a side plot to the main story. Let's just say that the Hulk and his friends win. Throughout this whole story, we see many of the Hulk's different personalities come back, like the previously mentioned Joe Fixit. We also see the Savage Hulk and Devil Hulk and the return of Worldbreaker Hulk from one of my favorite Hulk series, World War Hulk. That's where he basically beats everyone, and I mean everyone. The X-Men, Avengers, Doctor Strange, all of them. Anyways, we see these versions of the Hulk in both his mindscape as well as the below place. They are able to reside separately as individual personalities. At one point, Bruce Banner is captured by the leader, aka Samuel Stearns, another gamma-infused being who is possessed by the one below all and is draining Bruce's gamma energy. When we get to the last issue, where many of the revelations and plot twists take place, we catch up with Joe Fixit Hulk, Savage Hulk, and the reporter Jackie McGee, who is now gamma-powered. Inside the the leader's base, people see ghosts of their past, and there are a lot of throwbacks here from prior Hulk stories. The leader begins to take control of the Hulk and starts beating Joe Fixit Hulk. However, Jackie McGee, seeing ghosts of her father, gains inspiration and is able to use her newfound gamma powers to pierce a hole in the leader, cutting him out and cutting his connection to the One Below All. This is key because Samuel Stearns reveals that the One Below All has siphoned enough gamma power from Bruce Banner and that he is now here. Joe Fixit Hulk then demands to see who the one below all is. And actually, the one pulling all the strings is the one above all. He explains that for every weight, there needs to be a counterweight, and the one below all is that counterweight, while the Hulk is the physical manifestation of that. The one above all represents the cosmic rays of life, while the Hulk represents the gamma rays of death, chaos, and destruction. So the Hulk is basically a god. Now, I really like what Al Ewing does here. He took all the previously written mythos about the Hulk and created a story that made sense without any retcons. He created a story that opens the door for so much more. Why was the Hulk so powerful in World War Hulk and the other stories? Well, that's because he was basically a god, but a god of chaos, wrath, and destruction, and was created by the one above all to create balance in the universe. How does this affect the other gamma-infused gamma beings? I have no idea, but I guess we'll find out. And I'm actually looking forward to it. This series wraps up with Bruce Banner seemingly at peace with himself and his different personalities. It seems he understands the purpose of his suffering, and that gives him a sense of calm. For now, at least. I can't discuss this story without talking about the end of the universe plot in issues 24 and 25. It's another side plot, but a massive one that is never resolved and honestly kind of had me shocked. At the end of issue 25, it's revealed that a possessed Bruce Banner is the only one to make it to the end of the universe and ends up absorbing Metatron, which is the incarnation of this iteration of the universe. So some background here. The universe in Marvel Comics has had eight iterations, been created eight times and eventually gets destroyed and a new one is created. The main Marvel universe 
that we all know takes place in this eighth iteration. During the previous one, the seventh iteration, a character named Galan of Ta was the last survivor and ended up being Galactus, the devourer of worlds, in the following universe, which is the current or eighth universe. It, what's shocking is that we now see Bruce Banner at the end, but it was previously established in the history of the Marvel Universe issue number one that Franklin Richards, one of the most powerful beings out there who has godlike abilities, was the only survivor with Galactus in the end of the eighth universe. It's revealed now that Bruce Banner actually killed Franklin Richards, which is just kind of crazy to me. We then get a glimpse into the ninth universe where we see a giant Galactus version of the Hulk and instead of being the devourer of worlds, he's called the destroyer of worlds. There is no life in this universe because the Hulk destroyed everything. It's a feat that even Galactus couldn't do in the current universe. So I have so many questions. Where's the Phoenix in all this? What about the Living Tribunal? What are they doing? And what about the one above all? What's he doing? I need answers, Marvel. All right, I know that was long-winded and I tried my best to only cover the big points in this 50 issue story. So let's cover the value of the NFT as I see it. The way I see this is very similar to the House of X issue number one. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. They're both stories by great writers. Both are fairly recent releases and both are widely recognized as amazing stories by the fandom. And both open the door to so many more storytelling in the future. As such, I value the Immortal Hulk number one very similar to House of X number one. On one hand, the Immortal Hulk actually has a first appearance that House of X doesn't have, and that's Jackie McGee, but I'm not sure she will have any relevance in the future. Although she was key in helping rip out Samuel Stearns in the end, but I don't think she'll gain much traction. Put it this way, I don't expect to see a Jackie McGee show on Disney Plus anytime soon. It's also arguably the top Hulk story out there, the number one Hulk story out there, and it's consistently on all the lists in the top five. On the other hand, it's a relatively new series, finishing up literally last week, and typically age makes these assets appreciate. In short, in my opinion, there's not enough one way or, or the other to say this is a definite buy or a definite sell. As a fan, it's a definite buy. But as an investor, I think it won't gain traction until we get mass adoption, until we get the fandom on board and other stories expanding on the foundation of what Al Ewing brought us here today. Anyways, those are just my thoughts of the NFT and your crash course to this insane storyline. Thanks for watching, please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.